We continue our look today at the race for U.S. Senate. Incumbent Senator Tammy Baldwin is being challenged by Republican Leah Vukmir. We heard from Senator Baldwin yesterday. Today, our Rose Schmidt sits down for a conversation with Leah Vukmir, covering many of the same topics. You said that you would fall in front of a bus before letting people with pre-existing conditions go without coverage. So if the ACA were to be repealed, how would you do that? Okay, well, I, I stand by that. And here's the big lie of this election cycle, that I and other Republicans want to get rid of pre-existing condition coverage. And I have said it over and over again. The truth of the matter is this, and I hope people are listening, that before Obamacare went into place, federal law says that if you're on Medicare, Medicaid, or employer insurance, you are covered for pre-existing conditions. That means in Wisconsin we had almost 92% of the people that were covered. The remaining 8% we took care of through a, a high-risk sharing pool. And overall, just health care reform, let's bring it the power back to the states, bring the resources back to the states where we know how to do it. We need to bring competition back in, create a market in health care where one doesn't exist. We need transparency. We need the ability to have control over our health care dollars. We need association health plans. And we need the ability to um, purchase insurance, different types of insurance uh, that will meet individuals' needs instead of a one-size-fits-all that Senator Baldwin uh, supports and will actually decrease the quality of care. And let's talk about um, tariffs. What would you do to mitigate the effects of uh, from tariffs on Wisconsin's farmers? Well, I've talked to a lot of farmers around the state of Wisconsin, and uh, they all have said pretty much the same thing to me. They understand that uh, they're getting a raw deal right now, and they're looking to what President Trump is doing as a way to make fairer deals. I am a free trader. I believe in tra free trade, but we have to have fair trade, and I believe that in his heart that is what the president is trying to do, create more fair trade so that our farmers have access to more markets. I think it's important to look at what he's doing and the effect that it already is having, and this is why a lot of the farmers are giving him um, the benefit of the doubt right now. Uh, he brought the EU to, together, and there's a, a mini deal that they've done together. Um, he's made negotiations with China, I'm sorry, with Mexico and Canada. And now think of the block that these countries have and the negotiating power that they have to go against China, who is the real bad actor in all of this. We have a $375 billion trade deficit with China, and that is ultimately the pressure that is needed to ex be exerted uh, and on the country so that we can change this around and get our farmers access to more markets. And let's talk about immigration. Um, should undocumented immigrants who are already here be allowed to stay and eventually apply for citizenship? The wall has to be built first. I've said it over and over again, and I stand with the president and, quite frankly, a good number of people across the state of Wisconsin who feel it's very important that, first and foremost, we have the commitment that we will have that border security. Then we can talk about um, taking care of the, ch the children, the individuals who are part of DACA. Look, you know, there is a process to become a citizen and they need to go through a process just as my father did when he came to this country. I'm the daughter of Greek immigrants and I watched my aunts and uncles come to this country from Greece. I helped them study for their naturalization and citizenship test. I helped them study English so they could assimilate into this country and I think it's really important um, that people go through that process and a lot of people are upset that others are bypassing that process, participating in all the privileges of becoming an American, but not going through the process of actually becoming an American citizen. And you mentioned um, wanting to build the wall. Can you tell me how you think that the government should pay for that? Well, I think we're going to have to look for a, a lot of ways, and I think we can do it. There's a lot of waste in government, and I know that we can find a way to build that wall. You know. There are ways to build security perimeters that um, don't necessarily mean we're building the Great Wall of China. I've been to Israel. If anyone has been there, you know that they know how to do border security. There's technology that will allow us to um, close up those porous areas where it's not only illegal immigrants who are coming across the border, but we're dealing with human trafficking, drug trafficking, MS-13 gang members that are terrorizing communities, and there are public health concerns. There are outbreaks of diseases and illnesses because we're not having any public health uh, uh, assessment of the individuals that are crossing the border. And that was something that, you know, earlier generations that came to this country went through a process at Ellis Island. 
They were quarantined if they had a cough until they were cleared to come into this country. Right now, we don't have control over that aspect of our border as well. Next week, we'll feature the candidates for governor, incumbent Governor Scott Walker and challenger Tony Evers. Although at this point, the governor has declined to be interviewed for our series, but we'll see if we can get him before next week. Yeah.